China has been building up the biggest real estate bubble the world has ever seen. And it looks like the Ponzi scheme is finally starting to crack. And if it does, there is actually a legitimate chance it could bring down the entire Chinese economy with it. And that is not a sensational exaggeration to get views. Let me explain. Here's what you have to understand about China. Unlike the US who has enjoyed the good life in every way imaginable since World War II, the prosperity you see in China with its fancy skyscrapers, cities, money, and wealth is a very recent thing. Just a generation ago, Chinese people were absolutely suffering with famines and cannibalism and massacres and violent purges and exiles and a bunch of other disturbing stuff that we can't talk about without getting demonetized, which is why you should click that join button below for our uncensored documentaries. We're going to be releasing a few on some of these disturbing subjects, including forced organ harvesting. And all of this suffering was thanks to the beauty of communism. And a consequence of communism is that the plebs weren't allowed to own anything. Chinese people couldn't own a home like you and I can. They couldn't even own a square foot of land to grow their own food on. I mean, after all, you wouldn't want to be a greedy capitalist now, would you? But then the Chinese government came to their senses. They looked at the West and saw just how powerful it was when the plebs you rule over feel like they could own stuff. That I can own my home, that if I work hard, I can buy an even nicer home or a nicer car. When in reality, plebs in the West don't own anything. If you don't believe me, don't pay your property taxes and see what happens. People in the West just feel like they're able to own stuff. And because they feel like they have a sense of ownership, they actually work hard. It's insane, right? People will actually work hard if it's for their own selfish benefit and not some communist ideal. Who would have thought? And if you were the Chinese government at this time, this was revolutionary. You're telling me that all I have to do to fix my poor broken country is let my peasants feel as if they have ownership? Sign me up! But hold on, you don't want to give them too much freedom now. You still want to keep your power over your plebs while giving them the feeling of ownership. So instead of going full capitalist like the West, you decide to just give them a little taste of capitalism to get them working while keeping absolute control. So you give your plebs some economic freedom, you allow them to start businesses, you open up China to the West for foreigners to throw money into China, and most importantly, you give them the illusion that they can own property, that they can buy a house, own a home, when in reality, there is still no private ownership of land in China. Your plebs simply get a land lease from you that only lasts 70 years. They don't actually own their home, but it worked. Plebs got that feeling of ownership and it made all the difference. Because remember, your peasants were staring death in the face every single day because they couldn't own land. And now that they could buy real estate, now that they could own their home, it was a really big deal for them. So people started pouring their life savings into buying homes. And then foreign investors saw all this progress and decided that they wanted to invest in this fast growing economy. So they started pouring money into China. And all of a sudden, China's economy started becoming the fastest growing economy on the face of the planet. Things were getting better, more prosperous. But to your plebs, they grew up living through hell. They don't think all this newfound prosperity is going to last. They definitely don't trust your currency. They know it's complete trash. And if you think your currency is trash, why would you keep any cash? You will want to convert as much of that cash as possible into something that will hold its value. But your peasants can't put their money into the stock market or bonds. They can't trust those things either. So all that's left to preserve their newfound wealth is real estate, and a lot of it. And it was because of these two great forces, Chinese families desperately trying to buy homes, and a ton of foreign money pouring into China and Chinese real estates, that home prices in China psychotically skyrocketed into the biggest real estate bubble the world has ever seen. And it looks like that bubble is finally starting to burst. My name is Jake Tran, and we make documentaries on money, power, war, and crime so that you can see the world for what it really is. A giant game of acquiring power. You can't get out of this game either way, so instead of being a victim, why not learn to be a better player? Your parents, teachers, friends, society would never teach you any of this, so we're going to. Stay dangerous and this is the Great Chinese Super Bubble. Side note, I will admit that I had a thing for Russian girls at one point. So here's what I did. I downloaded this app called Babbel, one of the top language learning apps in the world, chose Russian as the language I wanted to learn, and boom, within a few minutes, I learned some simple Russian words like Ani duma, ti anya, spasiba. And I can confirm that it definitely impressed Russian women. No comment. 
Learning a language is a great way to impress women or a business person you want to build rapport with. And Babbel is the app for the job and today's video sponsor. Unlike most language learning tools, Babbel teaches you how to have real conversations that you will actually use in the real world. So you're not just memorizing random stuff like you did in your high school language class. Their 10-minute interactive lessons cover topics like business, travel, relationships, and more. And the thing that sets Babbel apart is their award-winning technology. Babbel has been empirically proven by academics from places like Yale University to help you start speaking a new language in just three weeks. Yes, you heard that right, just three weeks. This is thanks to their top quality speech recognition that helps you perfect your pronunciation and accent on the spots, plus all their games, videos, and even live classes. And they even have a 20-day money-back guarantee. That way, you can start learning and see how far you get before committing. Over 10 million people have purchased a Babbel subscription, and they keep coming back because Babbel just works. So what new language are you going to learn? Whatever the language is, you can start learning it right now with an extra 60% off your subscription by using my link in the description below. Click the link below for 60% off your Babbel subscription now. Thanks to Babbel for sponsoring this video. Compared to the West, Chinese society is rooted in the family, not the individual. That means in China, it's not just you saving up to buy a house for yourself. It's you and your entire extended family pooling together your life savings to buy a home. And every family started doing this. And because everyone started buying, home prices started to climb. And they kept climbing until all of a sudden, prices became unaffordable to the average family. But look, home prices just keep going up. There's no way I can lose if I can just find a way to get my hands on a home. And that's where loans come in. People started taking out mortgages to buy homes, borrowing money they didn't have. But they were perfectly okay taking out a loan because, again, home prices are only going up. It's the same psychology as a crypto speculator seeing the price of Bitcoin going up. They're comfortable taking out a loan to buy more Bitcoin. And the moment loans are introduced into the game, prices skyrocket even higher because the people that couldn't afford a home before now suddenly had a lot more money to spend. And all this new money was competing over the same homes in the population centers where everyone actually lived and worked. So home prices would continue to climb until even people with loans couldn't afford them anymore. But again, we need to buy real estate to preserve our wealth. And if we can't compete for houses in the cities where people actually live, I guess we'll just have to buy real estate in surrounding areas that are much more affordable because no one lives there. Enter Ghost Cities. These giant brand new cities are scattered all over China, all filled with extravagant monuments, parks, skyscrapers, brand new roads and infrastructure, and yet there's not a soul in sight. It's estimated that there are at least 65 million empty homes in China. That's one-fifth of all the homes in China left vacant, enough to house the entire population of France with it. This is what happens when you extrapolate out the scenario we just explained. This is what happens when owning a home is so ingrained into your culture that you have to expand your search into worse and worse locations until you end up buying a condo in a skyscraper that isn't finished yet in a city that isn't finished yet that absolutely no one lives in. And what people forget is that someone has to build these residential buildings, someone had to build these ghost towns, someone had to spend the last few decades making bank off of the Chinese people's insatiable thirst for real estate. And that someone are China's megalithic property developers. As the masses were drooling from the mouth watching home prices go up, and thus their wealth go up on paper, Chinese real estate developers, the companies that built these homes, were rolling in money. They were selling more houses than they could build. Since they couldn't keep up with demand, they thought, hmm, why don't we just pre-sell a home? Meaning why don't we get the money from the plebs first, where they literally take out a mortgage and start making mortgage payments before we even start building their home, and boom, it worked. Pre-sales went through the roof that wasn't built yet. People were so desperate to get a home that they scraped together their down payment from all their family members, they got a giant mortgage, and started making mortgage payments every single month for years while their condo was still being built. 
Imagine paying for a house every single month for years before it was actually built. At one point, demand was so high that 90% of the properties being built in China were pre-sold. For the developers, this was amazing. They got the cash up front and the demand seemed never ending. So logically, we gotta start building even more. People are just gonna want more condos, so we might as well go big or go home. So just like how the people felt comfortable taking life savings and getting a loan to buy a house because they saw prices just continue to climb, developers also felt comfortable taking all the money customers gave them for pre-sale homes to take out loans to start even more giant residential towers. And Chinese banks and investors happily supplied them with the debt. So much debt, in fact, that the second biggest property developer in China, Evergrande, that manages enough land to cover the size of Manhattan, racked up $305 billion worth of debt, more than any other real estate developer in the world. To put this into perspective, Evergrande had borrowed more money than the entire GDP of New Zealand, or Finland, or Portugal. And in 2018, Evergrande was named the most valuable real estate company in the world. And for a while, it was all sunshine and rainbows, the plebs got the feeling of ownership and social status if they could get their hands on a home or a presale home and saw their home values go up. And the developers were growing like crazy through presales and taking on massive debt. But then, the cracks started to show. Do you know when you're in a real estate bubble? When the price of homes are way out of touch with how much people are making. During the housing bubble in America around 2008, home prices peaked at around seven times people's median income. Seven times what the average person makes in America, that's pretty crazy. Side note, that ratio is also now even higher than it was at the housing bubble peak, but that's a story for another video, so make sure you subscribe. Now let's see what that number is like in China. At its peak, a condo in Shenzhen cost 43 times the average yearly salary in China, and in Beijing, 42 times. A new home in a major Chinese city costs more than what the average person would make in over 40 years. Even in New York, one of the most expensive cities in America, homes cost just 10 times the average salary. When this happens, how much higher can prices really go? How is the regular working class ever going to be able to buy a house? How much longer can this really last? Hint, it's already collapsing. It didn't take long for the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, to realize that constantly loaning developers money to build more condos wasn't sustainable. Eventually, home prices were going to get too high for people to afford, people would stop buying. Prices would nosedive, leaving the industry in chaos and the Chinese economy in crisis. It just wasn't an option. So they did the only logical thing. They stopped Chinese banks and investors from giving so many quick and easy loans to developers. They hoped this would slow down the number of apartments being built and help keep prices stable. But they overlooked one thing. Pre-sold homes. These developers had overextended themselves. They needed the never-ending loans to finish the units they had already sold. So without the constant never-ending loans, developers quickly ran out of money to finish the condos people had already started paying for. Remember Evergrande? The second biggest property developer in China that was taking on an insane amount of debt to grow? Well recently, it just started missing out on debt repayments, which means they're all out of money. Which means they're on the verge of collapse. Dozens of China's biggest real estate developers are also now missing debt payments. They're literally all on their last dying breath. So what did all of these developers do? They just stopped building, and all their buildings came to a complete standstill. The same buildings that families pre-bought and spent years making mortgage payments for were not being built anymore. And the people are furious. Imagine taking out a home loan, paying your deposit, and making monthly mortgage payments for years, believing you were going to move into your new home soon, only to find out that the company building your apartment ran out of money and just stopped building your home. That 
was the reality millions of Chinese citizens woke up to. Combine that with all the suffering that's been happening in China with their extreme COVID lockdowns, and the people have had enough. Why keep making mortgage payments on a home that was never going to be finished? And so, the mortgage boycotts began. Hundreds of thousands of Chinese homeowners in more than 100 cities banded together and simply stopped paying their mortgages in protest. Around $222 billion in home loans are under threat from mortgage boycotts. And if the majority of people start boycotting their mortgages, it could mean disaster for the Chinese economy. So the Chinese people are in this weird situation where families have put not just their life savings into random properties that no one lives in, but on top of that, they took out loans to buy these properties. A big chunk of them even bought multiple homes. So now they have to service those loans, meaning they have to pay off their mortgage every month. So not only did they lose life savings, but a good chunk of their monthly income is now gone too. And as prices start falling, at some point, they're going to have to stop paying their mortgage and default on them. And when that happens, the entire banking system is completely screwed because all those loans they lent out to home buyers and developers, well, they had to get that money from somewhere to be able to lend it out. And that somewhere came from money that other people deposited into the bank. Everyone from poor Chinese families putting their savings into their bank account to giant corporations keeping the money they need in theirs to operate. So if all these loans default, they might not have enough money in the vaults to pay back their customers' deposits. And if word gets out about that, there could be a bank run. And if there's a bank run, the banks will surely fail. And banks failing is just another way of saying people's life savings will disappear. And if the banking system fails and everyone's savings disappears, then the Chinese economy collapses. That's why America bailed out the banks in 2008. Because even though the bankers deserved to suffer, everyone's savings disappearing will cause a lot more social unrest. The CCP is very aware of this danger, so they're doing their best to cushion the fall. Right now, the CCP has instructed China's central bank to mobilize $148 billion to bail out the country's biggest real estate developers. And yes, there's an argument that since China has strict currency controls where it's super hard to get money out of China, and they manipulate their currency to keep their economy under control, they still don't have the same advantage America has. See, when you hear about how America has an advantage because they have the reserve currency of the world, it's just another way of saying America has been blessed with the ultimate power, the power to steal from the rest of the world through printing money. Since the world has to transact in dollars, whenever the US prints money, the rest of the world pays the price. America exports its inflation to the rest of the world. That is the real power of having the reserve currency. China does not have such a luxury. China makes money manufacturing stuff. The outside world gives them money, that money gets plowed into speculative real estate, and if that real estate collapses and the Chinese government has to bail out the banks, well, they're going to have to print money to bail them out. And since they don't have the luxury of being able to export their inflation to the rest of the world, the Chinese people will be the ones bearing the brunt of the inflation. And the thing about inflation is that it only ever affects the poor and the middle class. Why? Because the poor and the middle class spend money on consumer things. Consumer things that they have to keep buying while it goes up in price. The rich, on the other hand, spend money on assets, on investments, things that they hold on to that go up in price. The great Chinese super bubble is something the world has never seen before. And only time will tell if the CCP will be able to manipulate their economy out of this. The Chinese real estate industry has a lot wrong with it, but it's definitely not the only business out there with issues. Just look at Victoria's Secret, the world-famous lingerie brand that is known for its angels, skinny, tan, beautiful models. Every year, beautiful girls as young as 17 that are willing to do anything for their career are recruited from all over the world to walk the runway in tantalizing lingerie. 
Nothing could go wrong here, right? Well, it turns out, a disturbing amount can go wrong, because Victoria's secret has a sinister little secret they'd rather you not know about. You see, Les Wexner, the owner of Victoria's Secret, is also best friends and business partners with everyone's favorite private island owner, Jeffrey Epstein. Yep, you heard me right. The owner of a lingerie brand that employs underaged girls to model its very sexy collection was not just business partners, but close friends with the man that didn't kill himself. Strangely close, in fact. But here's the thing. Releasing a video on the man that didn't kill himself and his ties to Victoria's Secret and all the disturbing stuff they did would definitely get demonetized. So instead, we've released it as a private documentary, uncensored, only available to members of this channel. All you have to do to discover the nasty truth behind Victoria's Secret and other topics like Monsanto, the company that owns the world's food supply, CIA black sites, and the roots of Middle Eastern terrorism is to hit that join button below. Once you do, you'll have instant access to all the videos that are just too risky, too controversial to post in public. And unlike universities, we're not going to squeeze you for thousands of dollars only for you to walk away knowing nothing about how the world works. All it takes is $5 a month to learn the stuff no parent, teacher, or boss will ever teach you. And there's a refund policy too, unlike most YouTube memberships. So if you join and you don't think it's worth it, email us within your first month of joining for the first time and we will personally refund you for your first month. After your first month, there is no refund. So people say China is gonna collapse like all the time. And when I started seeing a bunch of videos on YouTube about this, uh, I was a little bit wary because how can you know that China is gonna collapse in exactly 29 days or whatever? But the more I looked into it, the more plausible it seems. Maybe not in exactly some specific number of days, but still. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you're new here, this is one of the biggest channels on YouTube for documentaries on money, power, war, and crime. So if you enjoyed this one, there's multiple videos just like this coming out every single week. And it's all free too. So click that subscribe button below. You can follow me on Instagram at Jake Tran, but that's gonna wrap up. Stay dangerous out there and I will see you guys in the next one.